Bye. Hello, I'm Catherine Ryan, and this is Virtually Everything for Comic Relief. Growing up in Ontario is a mixed bag because we have a horseshoe of poison, I like to call it, a few cities surrounding a lake where we have petrochemical industry and steel industry and another one that I forget. Maybe it's hot dogs. I didn't like growing up there. I always wanted to move to a bigger city, though I was very lucky to have access to musical theater and lots of fun with dance and gymnastics. And my sisters and I would just basically pretend our lives were a musical, kind of like uh, Billy Elliot, but with fumes. Before I realized that I was funny, I knew first that I was problematic and inflammatory and disruptive. I could see the world for what it was. I grew up with Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and pop stars and girls who were innocent and never upset anyone. And they had skin colored hair and hair colored skin. And I wanted to be like those girls too, but instead, I had a warped way of observing the world and I would try to share those observations with people who were not very welcoming to my worldview. <laughs> my mother thought I was funny and that's the only person in my life who really valued my sense of humor growing up. And I knew that if I could make my mother laugh, she'd be in a good mood. If I could make my mother laugh, I wouldn't get in trouble for the relentless emotional abuse that I inflicted upon my younger sisters, but certainly First time I was funny, I was just in trouble. I think one of the nice things anyone's ever done for me is when I was a 16 year old teenager with a driver's license who wanted to purchase a car. And I worked really, really hard at my hostessing job and I saved up 3,000 Canadian dollars, which is so much money for a car. And this car was five hours away near Ottawa, which is a different city to the one I was in. And I took the train all by myself and I felt really grown up. And I got to this family garage where they were selling me the car and it was broken and I cried and I panicked, but the family were so nice to me that they let me stay in their home until it was fixed. And then I drove it all the way home and it was a coming of age story, a nice family. Maybe what they did was mean actually, because they sold me a broken car, but I was none the wiser. It had a soft top and it was ready for summer fun. <laughs> The weirdest interaction that I have had with a fan was early in my career when I had a fan follow me onto a train after he had been to my show and he said, I love you so much, I love your show, I got you some chocolates and a rose. And I said, thank you. And it was a rose that was not real. It was a pretend plastic rose. And I said, oh, that's a really nice gift, thank you. And he sat with me for an hour and chatted to me and chatted to me and chatted to me. Luckily got off at the next stop. I thought that was the weirdest interaction that I would have had and that it would end there. But unfortunately, when I arrived home, he sent me a series of Instagram DMs, which were photos of himself in compromising romantic positions with the rose. And let me tell you, without traumatizing you, this rose had a colorful past. I'd smelled the rose when I thought it was real. I'd held the rose in close proximity to my face. I brought the rose into my home. All that had happened to that rose was genetically imprinted on me and everything happened to that rose. The best thing about being Catherine Ryan, as an example that I can remember, is when I got married as Catherine Ryan, I didn't have to ring any friends and family or tell them because I just told Jonathan Ross. I went on the Jonathan Ross show and he said, what's new? And I said, oh yeah, I got married last weekend. And that handled all the admin of letting family know. I didn't have to ring anyone or tell anyone. And yes, they were annoyed. A lot of people felt quite viscerally hurt by that, but I don't care about them. If I did, I would have invited them to their wedding. Do I need close family relationships? No, because I'm Catherine Ryan and people are nice to me uh, on, a, on a shallow level for no reason because of my status as a comedian and that's really all that matters.
Jennifer and Ryan will hopefully be in a position to choose meaningful projects in 20 years time. I would always like to be working. My dad always talks to me about retirement and pension plans. I have to explain to him that my aim in life is to be on stage until I'm 80 years old and die under the knife in some, you know, Brazilian butt lift gone wrong. She died doing what she loved, they'll say. And I don't think that comedians can be replaced by robots yet. So as long as I get freedom to be the mistress of my own destiny and do some type of comedy, then I'll be glad. I wouldn't do anything for 24 hours to raise money for comic relief. This is the most that I'll be doing. I'm really sorry. I see people dancing and prancing and going on trips and canoeing, and I don't want to do any of that. And that's okay. It's all right to be like me because you need us to cheer on and support the brave individuals who want to get in the Thames. Is that what they do? I'm not doing it. A genuine change that I would like to see in the world is if we could stop politicizing everything and dividing ourselves exactly down the middle. It's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? That's always exactly down the middle. Feels like a conspiracy. I just wish that we could listen and be receptive and have meaningful conversations when we disagree with someone, for the most part, unless their viewpoint is dangerous. Then don't listen to them at all. But for the most part, you will see that we're a lot more similar than we think. And a lot of times when people are angry, they're actually hurt and afraid.